Hello my dudes and welcome back to All The Mods 9 to the Sky. Last episode we managed to get a load of polonium. It was really good. We dealt with our nuclear waste in style. But it brought us onto the problem that we need some netherite. Mechanism's going really well but we want to move on to Create now. It's an exciting mod. Honestly, I love Create and I know you guys at home love it too. But if we're going to jump into that mod, I want to make sure we have a great new place to do it. So I began to set up this platform next to the ore factory. There's a load of room here, but I'm still worried it's going to be a bit too small. However, we can always build upwards, so there's no massive problem here. I want to break away from the polished diorite that we've been using as well, so I'm going to try and use as much clay bricks as I can for this build. I'm kind of feeling like rebuilding the Sipsco Dirt Factory, because honestly, that was a pretty iconic building. But before we finish the building, all I really wanted is some basic framework for us to get started with the mod. And here we go, check- oh wait, hang on a sec, we should probably build a bridge here because I can't really get over very well. But- oh wait, wait, wait where's, my, where's my jetpack? What? My jetpack, what? Oh, it's got no fuel! Oh no, <laughs> no, uh, will I survive? Oh yeah, of course, because I'm wearing speedrunners. Wait, who's this? Oh my god, <laughs> what are you? A skeleton on a bee? Have I got any weapons? No. I guess we just leave him to die in the sun. Oh, no, he's... there he goes. So long, pal. Right, so yeah, create. Very exciting. How do we get started with create? Well, just like with mechanism, it's got a really cool quest chain. And that's going to be our way forwards. To make things easier, I've got wireless access to my computer. I've also brought the computer cable down here so we can export from our system all the things we might need for some cool machines. We might need power as well, but we'll worry about that down the line. Let's take a look at the create quests. Ah, oh, wow. So this is the create tree. And I thought this would be a bit more involved. But it's not. It's um, it's kind of a bit of a basic tree. But it certainly has some progression along the middle here. It all begins with the create wrench, I guess. Or just taking the button and getting a wrench. Nice. And let's get this party started. So andesite alloy is basically the basic block of create. You use it to make all of the basic machines that you're going to need to build your contraptions. Okay, so let's jump into create. So I've got my wireless crafter here and I've got loads of stuff in here as well. But also if we go to at create, You'll see I've put a few recipes into our computer, so if we need to get some shafts, some mechanical belts, some cogwheels, whatever, we can craft those over at the computer. Super easy. Now our primary goal this episode is going to be, if I can find my, uh, my, where's my clipboard? Maybe my backpack? There it is, right, yes, we've got a pretty exciting goal this episode, and that is to get netherite. So we can remove these, because we've done all of those, and here we go, get netherite. But let's go through the stages we need to do that. So we're going to have to do bulk, haunting, and of course create power generation. There we go. Because create power works a little bit differently to regular power. You need rotational force rather than redstone flux. I guess it both begins with RF, but whatever. So how are we going to do this? Well, let's have a look. I hope the quests were going to guide you in a more kind of direct this is how you get power, these are the machines kind of routes. But it is kind of a bit of a spider going on over here. However, doing these first basic quests is definitely going to be our way to unlocking loads of rewards that we're going to need to continue with Create. So let's just start with all of these quests. What I'd love to do is get completionist with Create because it looks like it's going to be very simple to actually get all of these done. So boom, number one, Andesite Alloy. We'll take the Andesite Alloy that we have out of here and ask it to craft 64, because we'll definitely need 64 of this. Boom, in the bag. Oh, pretty quick, wow. Quest complete. And then we can kind of like rotate around and do all of these things. So eight big cog wheels, eight small ones, 16 shafts, and of course mechanical belts. Now mechanical belts are a bit of a weird one. I was looking at how to make these and they need kelp, which brought me over to the fact that we need some different sieves. Basically the sieves I was using, the meshes I was using, weren't getting me kelp. But now we have a dirt one set up to get me, ooh, sugarcane. And most importantly, andesite for create. Very cool. Also, we modified our sieve that is going through sand down from a diamond mesh to a gold mesh because a gold mesh will, as you can see, get us kelp. Not at a huge rate. We've only got 440 in here, but still, that's enough for us to get going with. So yeah, I reckon a stack of each of these very important create pieces is going to be big. 64 belts, 64 
shafts, etc, etc. And we'll go through these, put them in our backpack, and then we'll be good to go. So we have the basic building blocks of how we're going to get power throughout our system. Basically, you use shafts and cogwheels to move rotational force. It's pretty simple. Now let's examine netherite and work out how we can get from create to netherite. It's pretty simple. So ancient debris is sieved from blackstone. So if we can get our hands on blackstone, it's very simple to get ancient debris. We'll have loads and loads of netherite, no worries. But the problem is getting blackstone is pretty tricky. We want just regular blackstone. There's a few ways to do this. One of the ways we thought about it was barrel fluid mixing. But it's a bit weird because you need lava and witch water, and then the witch water is kind of consumed. You guys have always said that bulk haunting is actually a really great way of turning a whole bunch of things into other cooler things. For example, cobblestone becomes blackstone if we just blow it through a blue fire. Now, I don't exactly know what a blue fire is. Apparently, it's a fan behind a soul fire. Okay, well, that, I think, is actually pretty simple. So, okay, we have the shafts. That was like the first quest we did. Andesite casing is pretty simple. We need to set up, well, a deployer to push andesite onto a log that creates andesite casing. Now, you can just do this manually, like just right click on a log with andesite alloy, and that will get us loads of andesite casing. But I don't want to do that. I want to do things the cool create way. I think in the long run, that'll be way more fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a simple deploying network. Okay, well, let's get some items on the left that we're going to need. Super, super simple. So I'm going to get some logs. Got to have some logs. Got some logs? Oh, yeah, 33,000. That should be fine. Now, the reason we want to automate this is because, check this out. If we want to make it otherwise, we have to, like, just put loads of logs down. Like this. Then get the andesite alloy and go and manually... Wait, hang on a sec. It doesn't even work. Oh, no. So it has to be stripped. Can I right-click with the disassembler? No. It's got to be an axe. So as you can see, this process is... It's not hard, but it's a pain. It's a pain in the bum. Does the Paxel work? It is an axe. So we'll give it a go. Oh, okay, yeah. So you've got to strip all these logs. Then you've got to apply the andesite alloy. It's, you know, it's annoying. We don't want to have to do this. What we want to do is set up a system where we can make this casing on the fly. In the long run, we're going to thank ourselves for that. There we go. Loads of casing to get started with. But yeah, in future, we're going to set up a system. Cool. And I love systems, right? Systems are amazing. Now, this building is like really long. So my idea is that we have a lot of machines kind of moving from left to right, all with conveyor belts, producing what we want them to produce. I think that's going to look really cool. Like, especially if they're all in, like, a line, like a massive factory production line. I think that'd be really cool. So with that in mind, we kind of got to think where the power comes from. Now, we have this cool area out front. I was going to put, like, a nice big create sign here. The same way we have, like, mechanism and ore. I want, like, a big way to show people that, bam, this is the create factory. And I reckon this area here is the perfect place to do that. I don't want to mess it up with power. Hmm... Eventually, some big windmills would be amazing, but is there a way in the short term for us to turn our power from mechanism into power for create? Ah, so check it out. The alternator is a way to turn create power into like regular Minecraft modded power. So maybe there's a way to reverse engineer this, like backwards compatibility. Ooh, electric motor. This could be the one. Yes. So electric motors are compact and configurable. You put electricity in one side, and out the other, you get rotational force. Oh, yeah, this is the one we want. So, yeah, this is going to be amazing. If we get this right, we can power our Create Factory using the power of our mechanism nuclear reactor. Those turbines over there in the distance, if we can zoom in. Oh, yeah, love to see it. Yeah, those big bad boys at the top are going to power our Create Factory. Now, I have a feeling this is not going to be an easy craft. Oh, man. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, this is actually quite late game create. The crafting recipe doesn't even fit inside a regular crafting bench. Oh, man. Well, okay. No worries. So for now, we're going old school. You know what? I reckon we will put some windmills on this grass patch over here. We can have the create sign be on the building instead. I think that will look equally cool. So it all begins with power. How are we going to create some create windmills? 
Now this is not as tough as you'd think. It can be a bit overwhelming create because there's so much to it, but let's just start from the start very simply. So we're gonna need some windmills. That starts with windmill cells. These turn wind into rotational force. Cool, yeah, the wind blows, the blade spins. Let's go and put some of these up in our auto crafting setup. So here we go, yeah, a windmill sail. So we've got the recipe for andesite, we've got the recipe for sticks as well. Uh, we will need the recipe for wool, string into wool, but there is the recipe for the windmill sail. Boom. And white wool can be string, so we'll do that one. Pretty simple. Boom. We'll put this in the vanilla one, because it's a bit more of a vanilla recipe, wool. But the windmill sail is definitely create. You can see here all the other recipes I've got. Pretty cool so far. So the windmill sail turns wind into spin. Wind into spin. That, that makes sense, right? The windmills get glued to a radial chassis. Is it linear or radial? I think it's radial. So boom, we'll need a radial chassis. Go over to the recipe thing and put this in here. Pretty simple, there we go. Just andesite alloy and logs, no worries. So the radial chassis. The radial chassis is then connected to a mechanical bearing, I think. No, 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 windmill bearing, there we go. And again, very simple craft. In it goes. You might need the recipe for oak slabs, actually. And it's as simple as that. After it goes through the windmill bearing, we have power. We can come off with shafts and we're good to go. So let's get this going. Now, yeah, as you can see, I moved the dirt up here like this because I was a bit lazy. I wanted to get this dirt platform populated with grass. I didn't have any grass seeds at the time. So, yeah, boom, just did this. Uh, we can fix that now, though. Off it goes. Nice. Very nice. So let's get it done. What we want to do now is make loads and loads of windmill blades. You can never really have too many wind... Well, you can have too many windmill blades. And if we have too many, well, maybe our whole skybox will become more of a heli carrier. But I think we're fine for now. Create windmill sail. So we want at least 64 of these. Boom. But you know what? Probably actually. Could go even, even further. Let's get these out of there. Let's make another stack as well. And there we go, as simple as that, two stacks of windmill sail. Next up we want a radial chassis. Oh, we didn't put that into the thing. We'll go and do that now. Oh man, Create. So when Create came out, it blew everybody away. Create was a mod that just like kind of broke all the rules people had already kind of had in their heads about what you could achieve with Minecraft. And honestly, it pushed so many boundaries that I feel like it really opened the doors. to what mod makers thought was possible, because now we're seeing all kinds of crazy mods that do crazy things coming out. But still, I think Create is one of the legendary all-time best Minecraft mods. I keep going on about how much I love mine colonies, but honestly, Create is the one that really changes the game for me. So we have the windmill sails. Now we need the radial chassis. So at Create. The radial chassis. Boom. Pretty simple. We only need one of these, but we will need one per windmill. So we might as well make ten, I reckon. We'll make more than ten windmills. Maybe we will. I've got twelve there, though. Okay, fine. And of course, the PS de resistance, the windmill bearing. Likewise, ten of these, I reckon. Oh man, and it's as easy as that. Easy as goblin pie. Now we're also going to need one more very important thing. Basically, if you want the windmills to spin properly, we need to make sure they're properly attached to the radial chassis. And what better way to stick things together than, oh yeah, super glue. Just like my Warhammers, a bit of super glue. Now we don't actually have any of these things, is that true? No, iron plate. We are going to get an iron plate factory over here at Create, but for now, we're going to need to, like, make a hammer to kind of smash these into position. An engineer's hammer, though, from uh, Immersive Engineering is great for turning iron into plates. Look at that, one to one. So we'll get a few of these. Oh, yeah. Honestly, might as well just spend the hammer to get a stack. Boom, chuck it in there. And there we go, got all the bits. Super glue, amazing. Now, super glue is a weird thing. It works in a really weird way. You kind of, like, drag it, like World Edit or the building gadgets. I'll show you what I mean. So, boom, we're going to put down some oak logs. I reckon how far away we're going to be from the stairs. One, two, three, four, five. Boom. And we'll go one, two, three, four, five. Now we'll put down the windmill bearing. 
like uh, how we can do this. Yeah, there we go. That looks very good. And here we go. Now the radial chassis sticks onto this. Boom. So this is the thing that's going to spin. And now we need to put a bunch of windmills on this. Now you can get really creative with how you design a windmill. And the only thing that really dictates how quickly it spins is how many windmill cells you can get on this. So you can design a really cool looking windmill or you can do what I'm going to do here which is just put some glue on the radial chassis, like that. There we go, good and stuck. Whoops, that's the wrong way. Be careful about the positioning of these windmill cells because they can be quite tricky to get correct. There we go, that looks good. So yeah, while you can design a really cool looking windmill, what you can also do is design a really uncool looking windmill. I mean, we could just make a lollipop, like a wind lollipop. <laughs> that, that makes sense, right? Oh man, I love the way that Create automatically assists you with where you place blocks. So yeah, look at this. And this, in theory, should function as a windmill. If we press Go, right-click with an empty hand, remove the glue, and boom! Oh yeah, we have our first windmill. And yeah, we'll make it look much nicer in future, but for now, this is a functional windmill. Now you can see it's spinning very, very, very slowly. So we'll stop the windmill and let's add some more blades to see how quicker it goes. We're gonna make it nice and big now. One, two, three, four blocks each way. There we go, a much bigger lollipop. Now let's turn it on and see what this has done to the speed. Oh yeah, now that is noticeably quicker. A nice speed from the windmill there. We'll make these bigger, taller, maybe even move them because this is quite a big kind of lollipop to have in front of the Create Factory. What's cool though is I think you can actually dye these windmill sails. Let's give it a go. We'll get some yellow dye just to test this out and uh, obviously turn off the windmill. There you go, stopped. So yellow dye. And, oh yeah, so we could even have rainbow windmills. Oh man, that would be amazing. There we go, and now we'll press go on the windmill one more time. And you can see, yeah, oh look at the yellow spin. Yes, yeah, so we can get a really cool pattern going on on these windmills. Oh man, that, that's gonna be really cool. I can't wait to get these designed. Anyway, there we go, we have a little bit of power. Now what we want to do is move this power into our Create Factory. Now we're gonna go underground with the shafts here because we can bring it underneath the factory and bring it up over here at a select location. So we're gonna make sure that location is known to us pretty early on. I think this is a good place to come up with the power. We are gonna need some gear shafts to do this though because basically gear shafts let you move the direction of the shaft. So we've got 64 shafts here. We're probably gonna need some more. So I'll make some more. Boom. But we're also, yeah, gonna need loads and loads of gearboxes. Honestly, 64, sounds like it might be a lot. Oh man, more andesite casing. Well, okay, we know how to do that. 64 sounds like it might be a lot, but actually it's not gonna be that much in the grand scheme of things. We're gonna need a lot of gearboxes to get this factory built. Oh yeah, stripping the logs, and now we apply the andesite. Lovely stuff. I love the way these blocks connect as well. It's a really co they're really cool looking blocks, honestly. Great stuff. And this is super, super simple. So a gearbox looks like this. It's got sides. You put force into one and it'll spin the others in the opposite direction. What does that mean? Well, I'll show you. Also, if you don't want a horizontal gearbox, just put it in your crafting bench and it becomes a vertical one. And we'll need a few of these anyway, so we'll make some as well. There we go. So the vertical gearbox will stick this onto the windmill blade like that. And it gives you input to the top, the back, and the bottom that change the direction of the spin. So every time you put a gearbox onto another gearbox, it changes the direction of the spin. That's going anti-clockwise. So if we go right-click again, 
Now it's clockwise. That's an important thing to remember when you're planning your systems because it can get a little bit crazy. So that comes down here. Another vertical gearbox is gonna come out of here, I reckon. Then we're gonna dig through the wall there. Put some shafts to connect the two together, like that. And let's keep going. And there we go, the underneath is now connected with gearboxes and shafts. These go all the way over here. We'll connect this up like this. And, oh yeah, we've got power into our factory now. This is amazing. So what we want now is to put the vertical gearbox here like this. And this is gonna feed all the way along this factory and power all of the conveyor belts we're gonna have. What do I mean by that? Well, let me show you. So we'll bring a few shafts this way. And we're gonna build our first create production line. So we've got the windmill sorted, the windmill blades on the windmill bearing into, yeah, the gearboxes. It's all coming through. Now we have a slight problem, look at this. So this is turning anti-clockwise, which is pushing items towards the door. If we wanted to change that, we could add another gearbox here like this. I've already told you this, but I wanna hammer it home. And this would move the direction, so you can always add and change gearboxes to change direction. Important to remember. So production line number one, we're going to start here, and it's going to come along like this, and I think we're going to give ourselves enough space for this, we're going to end it here. Cool. Now we need to connect these two shafts with a belt. Did we make any belts? I'm fairly sure we did. So, at create. Yeah, here we go, mechanical belts. These are very cool. Like with anything in Create, if you hold W on it while it's in your bar, you can see how it works. Very simple. But we don't need an animation. I can show you IRL. So if I right click here and then right click here, boom, we have a belt. Yeah, kelp drive. Poseidon would be proud. Well, I hope he'd be proud. Actually, I think he's a bit of a jerk. Most of the Greek gods are jerks. Anyway. It's slow, but it does actually work. So we've got a conveyor belt that kind of goes along this way. We need to put items on the left, receive items on the right, and have a process in the middle that makes something happen. And this is where the deployer comes into play. Here we go. Now, did we make the deployer? I don't think we did, did we? No, but it's on the left over here. So a deployer's gonna need a few fancy things. We need the andesite casing, which we have, also need a brass hand. Oh my god, brass plates. Well, okay, we can we can do this. And there we go, yeah, a few brass plates. We'll make like, I think, 24. Because we might need the brass for something else. And yeah, now I think we can make the deployer. So. A brass hand, boom, man. It's a weird looking hand. Is that the, that's not a middle finger, is it? No, it's it's a it's an index finger, right, yeah. They're not being rude. And the last piece of the puzzle is the electron tube. Oh my God. So we've got iron plates. We've made some of those before, but polished rose quartz. Oh, okay. This is another process, but again, something we can do manually. So we use something called sandpaper, which we can make. It's just sand and paper. And you use this to just polish something. But what do you polish? Well, it's used with rose quartz. Rose quartz is nether quartz and redstone. That's pretty simple to make. We can make a stack of it right now. So how does this work? Well, it's pretty cool and pretty simple. You put the sandpaper, I think, in your offhand, the rose quartz in your main hand. And if you hold right click, oh yeah, pink diamonds, baby. Lovely stuff. Again, this is a process we can automate. Oh wow, Don't, the sandpaper doesn't last long. And there we go, we have our first deployer. Very exciting. So let's put down this deployer. Now, putting down these things like deployers can be a bit tricky. You have to kind of get it right. It's got to be at the right level. It's got to be pointing in the right direction. It can be really tricky. So the wrench should let us change the direction, actually, if we use the create wrench. But also, if you get it right the first time, oh wait, that's the wrong way as well. So yeah, let's just use the wrench, spin it around. And yeah, the thing is pointing now with one block between at the conveyor belt. This should work. Now this thing is also gonna need power, which is why we can bring 
a gearbox over this way. Now, what's really cool actually is that this thing has two input sides, basically the front and the back. So what you can do is you can have power going through this and through all the machines on this level. Pretty cool. And also the direction of the rotation doesn't really matter for a deployer. It's always gonna do what it's supposed to do. So a shaft up like this, then a vertical gearbox, if we have them, over here like this. Hook it up with a shaft, and oh yeah, we're in business. So now this thing will slowly, admittedly, point at whatever's down there. So what we want to do is make sure this thing gives whatever's on the conveyor belt some andesite alloy. So if you right click on the hand with andesite alloy, there we go, yeah, right click with the andesite alloy, and it becomes like a pushing hand thing. And this will push andesite alloy onto whatever is in the conveyor belt. Okay, pretty cool, pretty simple. But this is where we have another problem. If I toss a log onto here, this isn't gonna work because the log itself needs to be stripped. Oh no. Yeah, look at that, it's not even doing it. Okay, fair enough. So how can we make a stripped log using Create? It'd be very simple to push this through a mechanism sawmill, use an exporter from refined storage. We could automate this with other machines, super simple, but we wanna stay pure to Create. So that's why we need a Create mechanical saw. Here we go. What this is gonna do is, if we press U, yeah, so it's, there's 28 recipes here, quite a few, but basically it turns logs into stripped logs, which is what we want. Oh yeah, now we're talking. So does this work? Only one way to find out. Put an oak log here. Here we go, so the log is coming along the conveyor belt. It's gonna hit the saw any second. Oh, there we go, oh look at that, that's amazing. It becomes a stripped oak log. Oh yeah, workshops most feared. Man, yeah, you don't wanna kinda of get too close to that, you will lose a hand. In fact, maybe that's what this create thing is. It's somebody's hand after it got sawn off. But here we go. Is it going to work? Yeah! And boom! The process is complete. We've got a saw blade, sawing, yeah, and a sight casing. And this will pop off the end, so we can pick it up when it does. Oh yeah, super cool. Okay, so that is the basics of create. You get power, conveyor belts, machines, processes, gearboxes, deployers, whatever. That's basically create in a nutshell. There's a few things we need to do to fully automate this, like we need to have a way so that we can always get more andesite alloy into this hand. We could also speed up the conveyor belts as well and have a way to get logs automatically placed on this conveyor belt. But that's all like way too much for us for now because what we really want to do this episode is get some netherite. We're getting a bit distracted. Create power generation, we've done that. Now we need to do bulk haunting. So the way this works, we're gonna need a fan, a create fan, here we go. Mechanical fan, encased fan. Very simple, and if you hold W, it'll show you how this works. You give it power and it blows stuff. It actually moves objects as well, which is really cool. You can use this for mob farms if you want, it's very fun. But all we really wanna do is use it to bulk haunt. So we're gonna need to make one, I reckon, maybe two even. We've got shafts, we've got andesite casing. What we don't have is propellers, but again, that's a pretty easy craft. Okay, so we're gonna set this machine up next to, oh my God, yeah, look at this, this is amazing. The production line works. I love how they're like randomly put on the conveyor belt as well. Looks very higgledy-piggledy. So we want two fans, and we want the fans moving the same direction. Now both of these conveyor belts are moving the same direction, so we could use those. We'll bring a shaft along here like this. A couple of vertical gearboxes like that. Then another vertical gearbox like this. And we can plunk the fans on the front. Now we're gonna have a small problem here because look at this. Yeah, I don't think these fans are spinning quick enough. They might be, but it's not really blowing me back very quickly. Look at this. Yeah, there's no power there at all. So we could speed up this whole system down the line. Now we need to put a soul fire in front of the fan so it blows the soul fire onto the conveyor belt. Let's give it a go. So how do you make a soul fire campfire? So two of these, thank you very much. 
Do these need to be below or on the same level as the encased fan? I think they have to be on the same level. So we'll move this up. Oh yeah, now look at that. The particles are blue, which means we must have made a bulk haunting setup. Yeah, that's amazing. Look at those blue particles. So this is shooting soul fire out in this direction. All we need now is a conveyor belt going past this stuff. Okay, pretty simple. Oh yeah, so let's give this a test. We'll need some cobblestone now, so I'll get some cobblestone to test this out. 100k in here, no worries. So, one cobblestone on the conveyor belt. Is this gonna bulk haunt? We want this to turn into blackstone, that's what we're looking for. Cobblestone, oh yeah, it's getting a blue particle effect, so something is happening. But it doesn't quite get enough as it goes past one. That's kind of why we have two. No, okay, no luck there. It might be that we actually need three of these, so we'll give it another go. And let's try it again. We've got three campfires this time. This should be enough to turn our cobblestone into the right thing, I hope at least. Let's give it a go. So it goes past one, then it goes past another one, and then finally it goes past a third one. And is this gonna turn it? Yes, there we go. Oh man, so three is the magic number. And we have blackstone. But hang on a sec, I know what you're saying. We've only got one bit of blackstone now. That's like nothing. We can't sieve one blackstone at a time. That will just not work. But it is called bulk haunting. So what if we put a whole stack on here? Boom, 63 in this block. Let's see what happens now. There it goes. Past campfire number one. Come on, campfire number two. Yeah, okay, there we go. And is it going to turn the whole stack into blackstone? No. So it looks like the more blocks that are on this conveyor belt, the more soul campfiring is needed. Now, I've just had an idea. Basically, we can... Oh, whoops. Goddamn mechanical saw. We can speed this up massively. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to put loads more fans on here. Loads more campfires. Let's give it a go. So, yeah, check this out. If we bring the shafts along like this... Way cheaper than all those gearboxes, for one. And I believe what we can do now is just put one belt across all of these. And yeah, look at that, now they're all spinning. But they're all spinning the wrong way. Now they're sucking. Oh no, well that quite literally sucks. Now also, is there another way we can speed this up? I think if the fans are blowing quicker, it will get more haunting done on the blocks in front of it. So if we can speed up the rate at which these fans spin, we can definitely speed up the bulk haunting rate. I think that's what we're gonna need if we wanna haunt a stack at a time, which is what we're going for right now. Okay, so here we are underneath the factory now. What we want to do is we want to take the power that's coming over here via these shafts without changing the direction of any of the existing setup. So we'll come down here from this one. We're going to take the shaft down like this. So we're going to need some of these cogwheels that we made before, the big ones and the small ones. Basically what we can do is we can turn a small amount of spin into a big amount of spin. And here we go. So we have something that's spinning very, very, very slowly. Now, if we put a big cogwheel on this, it's suddenly spinning really quickly around the edge. So what we can do now is put a small cogwheel next to that. And suddenly this is spinning even quicker. And we can change this again by putting another big cogwheel on that as well. Then a small cogwheel for even more crazy speed. There we go, and we can keep doing this, ad infinitum, to get an insane speed on our cogs. And there we go, man, yeah, look at the speed that, that at which that smaller cog is spinning now. That's gonna make our bulk haunting much, much, much better. So, oops. Now let's go topside above the factory and turn this into power we can get into our fans. Oh yeah, look at the speed of this. This is insane. Now let's try a stack of cobblestone on here. Here we go, the moment of truth. Is this gonna turn a stack of cobblestone into black? Oh man, had to rain, didn't it? Put a real dampener on things. Past fire one, past fire two. Oh, oh my God, it's, it's got me, it's got me. <laughs> no, fire three. 
Fire four. Fire five. Oh my god, if it doesn't use number six, we're gonna need even more haunting. Hey! Hey, go away! Oh my god. So not quite a success, but this machine is like so easy to upgrade. All we need is more fires, more fans, and more shafts. So let's do it. And here we go, the moment of truth. So one more time, the belt here, the belt there. We've got some rude dudes appear during the storm, so that could be a bit of an issue. Um, but yeah, let's try another stack of cobblestone. There we go. Oh man, I hope this works. Is this going to be enough to turn a whole stack into blackstone? I don't know if it will be, you know. No, it's not. Oh, no, wait, look, it is. Oh, my God, just in time. At the very end, it becomes blackstone. Now we need is a way to gather this into a chest so we can pump the blackstone into our computer system. Once we do that, we can feed it to its own auto sieve, auto hammerer, and then we're going to get netherite. So that's an important step, an important phase. So how do you get stuff into a chest using create? Well, you use these things called funnels. We can use an andesite funnel. Pretty simple. We've got all the bits. Put the mechanical belt here. Wait, what? That was the recipe. Huh? Yeah. Oh, dried kelp. Dried kelp. Do we have any dry Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, my stuff on oh, my levels. Oh, my. Go oh, and I don't actually. Oh, this is bad. Don't have my jetpack. Um. Well, guess I'll die. Oh, my God. What a mess. Oh, I should have seen that coming. I really should have seen that coming. A combination of not enough food. Oh, man. What a joke. What an absolute joke. Anyway, where was I? Yeah. So we're going to need funnels. Ugh. Remind me. Claim these blocks. Yeah. Definitely claim these blocks. We put the diamond barrel, uh, I guess, whoops, here. That should work. Get rid of this one. Then we put the funnel in front of the barrel. Is this going to work? Yeah, it looks like it's all connected. So now let's put the stack of cobblestone at the start and see if this works. Yeah, so the blackstone comes along here, goes into the funnel, and that puts it inside. Oh, wait, whoops. No, 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 no. So a funnel will also work like an outpipe if you put it on there. We had to take it off. But yeah, there we go. Blackstone in the computer. The external storage now set. We're going to make sure the external storage is set to extract only. So this doesn't become like a storage chest for other things. Blackstone in there. And now it's in the computer network. Now we can go over to the ore factory and get an auto sieve and hammerer set up over here. Oh man, we're going to get netherite this episode. Here we go now. Are we going to get lucky, my dudes? Are we going to get netherite? There's blackstone pebbles. Okay, and not a great start. There's more blackstone pebbles. Still not a great start. Th more blackstone pebbles. And we've run out of... And we've run out of blackstone. Well, okay. Are we sure this is working? Let's put some more blackstone in this hammer. See if we get lucky again. Here we go. Flux sieve. Boom. Going through the crushed blackstone. Bum, bum, bum. Nope. More blackstone pebbles. Loads of blackstone pebbles. Oh my god. Is this, is this the correct recipe? Well, do you know what? It's only a 6% chance of ancient debris. So what we need to do now is make sure we have a way to get cobblestone onto this conveyor belt. And here we go. Now we need to make sure this is set to export cobblestone. So we'll get some cob from here. Here we go. In it goes. And it needs to go at a reasonable speed. So we'll give it four upgrades. Boom. Yeah, look at the cobblestone plow into there. And you can see, look at this. Yeah, so it's slowly coming out one by one. Again, this is a really terrible rate. We can't, we can't, we need more than this. What's going on here? So is there a way we can speed up the funnel? No, you know what? There isn't. Not at least with an andesite funnel. But if we make a brass funnel, which is, again, not too tricky to make. I think we can actually make one of these. Yeah, we can. Boom. And these can actually have upgrades. Andesite funnels can only ever extract single items. Okay, yeah, cool. Brass funnels can extract up to a full stack. Yeah, that's exactly what we want. Oh, yeah, there we go. Up to... Up to any. So now it should... Yeah, there we go. Now it's coming out by the stack. 
Oh, yeah. This is what I'm talking about. And does it work? Are we getting stacks and stacks of blackstone at the end? Oh, wait. We need that funnel. Come, come here. Ooh, close one. Yeah, look at this. Oh, my God. Stacks and stacks of blackstone. And whoops. No, 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 no. I always misclick like that. So let's go and see if it's going through the sieve now and see if we're getting actual netherites. Here we go, the moment of truth. Oh, we get, yes, oh my God, and holy, holy smokes. Look at this, a whole stack of ancient debris, 66 already, we have netherites. Oh my God, dudes, well, thank you for watching this episode of All the Mods to the Sky. This episode, we jumped into Create, had a quick glaze over how machines work, and then pioneered towards bulk haunting. We've done that now, we're bulk haunting stacks and stacks of cobblestone at a time, and we're getting loads and loads of netherite. That means netherite is unlocked for us to upgrade everything we have to netherite. That's insane. Things are going to get souped up around the sky block really quickly. Next episode, we're going to move back to mechanism because I really want to finish off the tower. We're so close to the end. A fusion reactor, then the other big thing, the super critical phase shifter thing. That will be amazing. So we'll come back to create, make all this a bit more beautiful, down the line. But until then, make sure you press like, hit subscribe if you want to see some more videos, and until next time my dudes, thank you for watching and take care.